Hi, this is Tom from Inspiration Middleworks, and in this week's video, we're going to look at the status of our CNC mini mill conversion. So this winter, we converted our old uh, Sig uh, Harbor Freight branded uh, mini mill to CNC. Um, as many of you know, I, you know I, do, I do manual machine work, both mill and, and lathe, and, but I do have a CNC plasma cutter. Uh, otherwise, I don't do CNC work, uh, or not that much. And um, frankly, I've been wanting a way to dip my toes in the water without spending a fortune on, uh, you know, I mean, really, when you start looking at it, equipment, you can spend a ton of money on CNC equipment. And, uh, you know, I already had the little, you know, mini mill. And so for, you know, it was, it was about $1,000, uh, $1,500 total uh, cost. I was able to um, get the mill converted over to CNC and fully working. Um, now that I got the machine up and running and everything is working, uh, the next stage for me was uh, working on, on the G-code and um, how it all flows from end to end. Um, the first thing that I really ran into uh, was I'm using um, I've, I've used a variety of software. Um, I've got licenses for uh, the student edition of SolidWorks. Um, I've got a uh, license through or a free you know, access through Onshape. If you guys haven't checked that out yet, uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, but I ultimately ended up going through uh, Autodesk Fusion 360. And I did this because it's got all of the cam side of it built in. Um, so effectively, it's HSM works, right? It's all, all built into the system. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, there's some great videos out there. Uh, um, John Saunders from uh, NYC CNC, you know, Saunders Machine Works, has been doing some videos on that. Um, I will probably do some videos just to show you what's been working for me, what hasn't worked. Um, but uh, uh, I ran into some issues with that, so let's let's take a look at those, and uh, we'll come back. All right, so we are in Fusion 360 at this point, and um, as you can see, I've got a lot of projects here. Uh, one of the things that I've been working on is a um, look at this branding iron here, um, for instance. So the branding iron um, is for a gentleman that I know that uh, um, has a uh, let's look at the model first. Um, yep. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, it's for a gentleman that I know that uh, makes cigars. Right. So let's just let's go ahead and we'll swing this around. Wow. There we go. I'm definitely not great at this. And um, what's nice about Fusion 360 though is that it does have the cam pieces in here, right? So you can come in here and you can see what I was working on. I actually redesigned this and, and did the cam a little differently, but you get the idea in here in that you can come in, uh, Fusion 360's got all of this built in in here uh, from facing to adaptive clearing, um, which is you know, a high speed milling style. Um, you know, John Saunders over at uh, Saunders Machine Works has been doing some videos on this. Uh, I'm not going to cover what he's already doing, and he's doing it better than me, than I could, so um, by all means, go watch his videos. Uh, but, you know, this is the kind of stuff I've been working on. Um, as I've been going through, and let's let's close this one out, and uh, let's look, I figured that um, I would start with something simple, right? And honestly, it came out, uh, it came, <laughs> came up at, at just the right time. Uh, I was working on this, and uh, John did a video that was precisely what I was working on. So it gave me a uh, sanity check to make sure that I was doing this right. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but for engraving, uh, there's a 2D uh, command in here called trace, right? And so tracing will allow you to go through and do engraving. So um, I went ahead. I've got a, an eighth-inch ball mill that I was going to use for this. I wanted something a little uh, more sturdy than my engraving tool. Uh, and you'll see why later. But uh, I and I wanted to do a couple of things. I wanted to uh, sanity check my work, right? So the first thing I did was, you know, I basically have it go through the whole process right at the work surface, just barely skimming the work surface. Then I have it go through a couple uh, depth of cut kinds of things. 
Um, the important part, and the part where I ran into issues is in post-processing, right? Uh, so if we go to post-processing, this is how uh, the CAM software actually formats the G code for your particular machine. And so they've got all kinds of different uh, uh, stuff in here for you, right? So whatever your machine is, they probably have, you know, the formatting in here or something pretty close to it. Now, I went with generic Mach 3 mil uh, in here. I might actually go in and open this config because uh, this may be the source of some of my frustration. But um, I've just been letting it go. I press, you know, post, give it a, um, here's actually the one that I was just doing. Uh, so I give it a name and let it go. Yes, I'm going to replace this one. And so it goes through and it loads everything up. Um, this is an empty one. Don't know why it does that. And here's our G code, right? It tells me I'm using tool 11, right? That it's an eighth inch diameter. The radius, corner radius on it is 0.065. Um, Z min in here, this is interesting. This is actually uh, what I have set. Um, and I'll, I'll go through some of the other stuff, but um, I was trying to make sure that I had the uh, minimum in here. I only wanted to take a tenth, overall 10,000th depth of cut, right? It's half inch. Uh, material and so for whatever reason it's saying that it could only go that way uh, I'll have to go back and, and look at that but uh, anyways the biggest issue that I was running into on this is I don't have um, in this machine right now I don't have a way I don't have lim limit switches installed yet I have some I just uh, physically haven't been able to get out and uh, install them right I uh, so Right now, I don't have a way to set the machine zero, um, and it's not intuitive. Mach 4 is just not intuitive at all, right? So um, this piece right here, and then in other versions, um, you'll see, depending on where I had the work coordinate system, and it took me a while to get the work coordinate system worked out, right? Um, at this point here where you know, we, we have our, our tool offset and everything's ready to go. So basically, you know, we, we initialize, we say tool six, we set our spindle speed. Um, we say, okay, so we're going to move to this X, Y coordinate. We're going to set our, our tool offset in here, and then we're going to start moving, right? So, and actually, you know what? I should have ticked the box to make this a G2. Um, uh, circle because this is a circle right, instead of doing all these parameters. Um, anyways, I just figured that out. But anyway, uh, feed 15 uh, inches a minute. And so basically, you see the Z starts out an eighth inch above um, where I want it to be, and it basically ramps down to the half inch that I, I touched off at half inch um, with the tool. Actually, I set it at, at 0.503, I think, um, which basically skimmed the top because um, I knew it, it would actually be, it was really only about a two thousandths um, height. And so it, it put me about a thousandth into the material, right? Just enough to show me where it was going and make sure that everything was lined up right, but not so bad that it was going to um, cause problems. So it goes, you know, and it does everything, right? So it's 3,103 lines of code that I didn't have to write. So I'm happy about that part. Um, what I ended up doing is I actually, when I saved this, I just went in and I took this part right here out. Um, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, and again, that might be where I need to go back and look at that configuration and make sure that I've got things right. It might be that I have something configured wrong in Mach 4. Um, this is... You know, this is the problem of, uh, or the challenge that you run into when you're trying to do these things without proper instruction. Um, so if you do know, feel free, uh, give me the comments. Uh, I got thick skin, but uh, then again, try and keep the comments uh, useful, please. Uh, anyways, so that's it. Um, you know, we posted. Let's take a look at uh, what happens in the real world, though. All right, so. A while back, I posted in the uh, Facebook YouTube Machinist community a question about how long it was going to take me to break one of these new tools that I, I had purchased. I, that was actually um, 
you know, it was a very fine tool and I haven't used it yet. But I can tell you it took less than two minutes to break a tool. Um, here, here's some footage for you. All right, so continuing on our learning by my mistakes, right? so you guys learning from my mistakes, uh, let's take a look at when you have the, uh, the wrong amount of, uh, or you don't have your, your motor tuning properly. So you guys saw that, right? Um, I was off by an order of magnitude, right? Um, you know, twice the size. Uh, so, or actually half the size because I was you know, at a thousand steps when I should have been at 2000 steps. Did my math wrong. Um, easily corrected, that was okay. So if it weren't bad enough that I'm having all these problems with the G code, when I finally get everything right, I get the work coordinate system right, I get the G code part of it right, I figure everything else out, of course, now there's going to be more problems. Okay, so a blue fuse. If I had to guess. Okay, so who would have expected the whole darn computer to blow up on me? This thing's only a few months old, three, three, four months old. So who would have expected that? Yeah, good times. I'm um, not to be outdone. Uh, I got on with Lenovo uh, Tech Sport, which is you know the machine that I have this running on is a little Lenovo desktop. Um, and my recommendation is don't ever buy a Lenovo desktop. That is my recommendation to you. Um, just so you know, there were sparks coming out of the power supply, and they're like, well, it's going to be three to five business days before someone can call you about you know, the machine. Don't plug it back in. Really? No kidding. So basically, um, I built a new machine from the parts that were working, and I, I bought a couple of, you know, I bought a new power supply and a new motherboard, and uh, got back up and running. So you'd think that would be it. Put my Well, then, I was not having any problems with this. The 1 8 ball car, uh, carbide running at 4700 RPM. So, our total depth of cut at this point should be uh, 10,000. Alright, for some reason, stop. So, I'm going to stop the shutter. And stop this and I'm guessing it's because I just changed out all that hardware that I need to get a new yep it's in demo mode 
son of a gun. We're in demo mode. Ah. Okay, so once again, something happened, but this time we're doing good. So I'll bring you back later. A uh, little teaser, everything's working right, and it stops again because, well, now my license is broken, right? Because it was tied to the old motherboard. <sighs> Makes the Linux version of the controller that much more attractive, guys. It does. But, finally, we get the license, the machine's working, everything. I've got the G code down, everything is there, and then we get... Success. So this is that second pass. So we're at a total of 5,000 steps right now. Well, there she is. The first part on the CNC mill with no errors. Thanks for watching. Okay, um, I know this is a long video, but I do have some questions to ask. Uh, you know, I took some photos, uh, so let's, I'll put some photos up, but let's see if it'll focus, if this camera will focus on it. Um, you can kind of see, oops, this side here. Right here, right? And I'll put some pictures, let's put the pictures up here too. So the top and bottom, as well as uh, on that one spot there, the, um, the end mill, it looks like I have flat spots at the top and bottom, and then when I finished up, it almost looked like it had lost its, its X position a little bit. Um, I'm not certain what caused that. Now, you know, we just threw these things around the machine. I, frankly, I haven't trammed the machine. I don't know if it's if it's there. It was an eighth inch ball mill and I was climb milling on this tiny mi machine. Uh, so maybe it flexed a little bit and it caused it to drift off. I, I don't know what caused that. Um, but what I can say is we're making progress. Uh, so the next step uh, in all this is to start cutting some basic parts. And then uh, I've got I've got some uh, production parts to, to make, uh, and so I'll bring you back for those when we're ready. Uh, thanks again for everybody. Uh, thank you for all the well wishes as I've been recovering from my back surgery. I, I'm actually up and about. I'm, I'm back to work part-time at this point. Um, it's going to be a long road. Uh, that's the nice part about doing this stuff is that it's light. Uh, I'm still on a... You know, no lifting more than 10 pounds restriction. I mean, uh, this is what, probably three, four pounds, right? That's about it. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not supposed to be doing much more than that. But it's getting there. I uh, thank you. Uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, I hope you're still with me on this, uh, <laughs> on this video, and you heard that. Thanks. Um, Maybe I'll go back and reshoot the, the beginning of the video. But anyways, I will see you again soon. Have a good one. Oh yeah, a lot of editing on this one. Uh, and more photobombing. Ah, good times. So, we <laughs> just losing it now. Okay. Um, I'll stop.